Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day where we are going to be diving into the comments that Damian Harris made about his former head coach Bill Belichick and the role that Belichick played in, from Harris's perspective, the demise of Mac Jones. So Harris the other day went on the Athletic Football Show podcast and he was asked about Bill Belichick and he ultimately blamed Bill for the struggles that Mac Jones went through throughout the final part of his tenure in New England. He referenced the fact that Mac Jones was a Pro Bowl quarterback his rookie season. He was an alternate to that point, but ultimately he did put together a very solid season, 3,800 yards, 22 touchdowns. He looked like a much more confident version of himself. And no, he wasn't necessarily making these massively dynamic plays, making these great throws, but he was sort of what a lot of us expected him to be in the NFL, which was a little bit of a game manager. I think that the comp for him that I liked the most sort of for Mac Jones coming into the NFL is that he could be a Kirk Cousins type of again just being a very solid quarterback that you're not going to lose because of where I know some people don't necessarily feel the same way about Kirk Cousins but he can win you games and the Patriots ended up winning 10 games and they ultimately got blown out by the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs. Mac wasn't even bad necessarily in that game, but the Patriots were just entirely outclassed by the Bills in that season, and the future seemed to be really bright for Mac Jones, but that's where Harris said that things sort of started to turn for Mac Jones, and he was put in a difficult position where uh Harris talked about the frustrations of Belichick hiring Matt Patricia as the replacement offensive coordinator after Josh McDaniels left that offseason to take the head coach job for the Raiders. And the that inexperience, it was sort of mind-boggling to everybody, really, at the time of bringing in somebody who just isn't an offensive mind at all and putting him in that position. And it felt like it was because of the familiar face for Belichick, where we saw, especially at the end of his tenure as a head coach and general manager in New England, that he really preferred to surround himself with familiar faces and people that he has worked with in the past and that's what he did bringing in Joe Judge and Matt Patricia and from there things got really ugly for the Patriots and from Harris's perspective he thought that Bill Belichick had sort of told Matt Patricia that quote these are Harris's words as long as you teach him what I say everything will be fine. And obviously everything was not fine in New England. They had two miserable seasons from an offensive perspective. And, you know, ultimately Matt Patricia, he ends up being fired from the position after the 2022 season and in comes 2023 where it, you can't, blame Matt Patricia any longer and there are some numbers in which the 22 offense was better than 23 but again at least this is my own thoughts as opposed to what Damian Harris was saying that Belichick almost took it out of spite it felt like at least in my eyes chose to not give Mac Jones any extra talent on the offensive end Mac was almost rebellious outspoken against the uh, the situation that he was put into specifically from a coaching perspective and Belichick for a defense that was already pretty good in New England he spends no first round picks on any type of skill players the first three for the Patriots uh, all of the picks in the first three rounds for the Patriots in last year's draft were on defensive players, which, not bad. Christian Gonzalez was a steal. We saw Keon White flash some potential as well. 
I'm not saying they're bad picks necessarily, but the Patriots, the conversation over the past couple years is they need a lot of help on the offensive end. And Belichick, who hasn't had a great reputation in terms of being able to draft skill position players, maybe that was it, is he was just sticking to what he knows he's good at, possibly, but he was blatantly ignoring the holes that were on this Patriots offense and obviously we saw by the end Mac Jones listen it sounds like I'm making a lot of excuses for him he was a disaster by his final season in New England where I don't know if there was a team in the NFL that had worse quarterback play than what the Patriots got with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. Now, Jets fans probably, to some degree, want to have a conversation there with the entire situation that played out after Aaron Rodgers went down with an injury, but it just ultimately, you know, last year was a disaster. And it, from from my perspective, it was clear that Mac Jones mentally was just sort of broken where he was seeing ghosts. The offensive line was horrendous for two straight years. It was horrible. And I think that Mac Jones just became extremely uncomfortable with pressure that it was just so easy for opposing defenses to get to him where it seemed like sometimes Mac Jones was trying to stick it out too much and end up making the hero ball play. And that almost turned into the second he felt any pressure, he decided, okay, I got to get rid of this. And the offense was just non-existent for a lot of the season. So he ultimately gets benched. Bailey Zappi takes over who is no better, but I think there is a real argument to Belichick really hurting the developmental process of Mac Jones. And to Damian Harris's comments, he said that Bill Belichick needs to be in control of everything. Obviously, not coincidentally, that is the same sentiment that other teams that had coaching vacancies this past offseason also felt like with Belichick, that they weren't ready to give up the amount of control that they at least anticipated that he would want. And Harris said that he absolutely has a right to do so, given the fact that Belichick has his resume of winning five Super Bowls as a head coach, another couple as a defensive coordinator. The guy obviously knows football and knows what it takes to win win football games. You know, second all-time in wins, but... Ultimately, the game, it's an interesting conversation as to whether or not the game passed by Bill Belichick. I still believe he is an excellent defensive mind, but I feel like especially as the years went on and especially after Tom Brady ended up winning a Super Bowl without him, his ego became a lot more fragile. And obviously, I myself am a Patriots fan. I will f forever be grateful to Belichick for what he did over the years, but Belichick's philosophy as a general manager was always, we're not paying you for what you've done in the past, it's for what we are getting out of you now. And that's just sort of the situation that Belichick fell into, where he was sort of living off of his past reputation. If any other general manager hired Matt Patricia as their offensive coordinator, they would have been fired by week six. But it was, oh, well, I guess we have to trust Bill because he has taken the Patriots to numerous Super Bowls. And ultimately, it just fell so flat. And ultimately, it's very rare that we see great things come to a storybook ending where even when you look at Peyton Manning who is you know leaving while on top well Peyton Manning was also benched during that season for Brock Osweiler and he was the starting quarterback for the Super Bowl so that at least makes it you can sort of gift wrap what happened in that light but ultimately he was carried by one of the best defenses of the 2000s and that Broncos defense led by Von Miller that was able to get the job done ultimately and a pretty good rush attack as well for as crazy as it sounds knowing that CJ Anderson was the lead guy there and I'm getting off on a whole different tangent here but you know 
it's it's rare we see what's going on with the warriors dynasty right now in the nba and how ugly it's looked and especially in these past couple years um you just don't get fa fairy tale endings for a lot of these great things and i'm curious whether or not belichick is ever going to get another opportunity in the nfl there's a chance that next year there are some organizations specifically you look at the 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 eagles and the Bills and maybe the Cowboys and these teams that feel like they are Super Bowl competitive but have at least some question marks at quarterback and or at, at, at head coach I should say and ultimately you know I think it might be the end for Belichick already um, after going unsigned this offseason now maybe again if you are one of these other teams that feel like you are right on the doorstep of winning your head coach is the one thing that's holding you back you sign Belichick for two three years and call it quits from there but I don't know necessarily it is seeming like it's the end of Belichick and you know again ton you have to appreciate the career that he put together and even still, you know, to this situation of what went down with Mac Jones, I mean, Mac Jones just was not good enough. But when you look at the way that Belichick treated this situation with Mac, it's hard to imagine that he's going to be somebody you can trust to develop young talent like that, especially at the quarterback position after growing maybe a little bit of a mental callus with Tom Brady who could do everything he needed of him and there wasn't really necessarily too much of a coaching need from that perspective especially in the latter part of Brady's tenure with the Patriots but let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section that is all we have time for today thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Um, be sure to check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. We are live here on the GSMC Sports Podcast every 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern. So we will be back tomorrow with some reactions from the Game 3 matchup tonight. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow. Take care. Go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? Nice.